welcome and thank you. It's, uh, it's exciting to... Uh, It's certainly exciting to have students here to put in front of you tonight, and it's also exciting to see some old, friendly, familiar faces, both as our musicians as well as the folks uh, in the audience. Thanks to those of you joining us in the audience here live tonight and those viewing from home. This is our eighth in our series of community forums designed to provide a glimpse into the programs and supports we provide for students throughout Council Rock. Tonight, our middle school principals will share with you what a day in the life of a student is like at both Holland and Newtown middle schools. It's no surprise that many educators and families consider the middle school years to be metamorphic, a time when change comes in everything, everywhere, all at once. As adults, we know that middle school is a pivotal time for students. They need responsive, nurturing schools in which to grow and change. We take that need seriously. In Council Rock, our commitment to students ensures they have a safe place to navigate their middle school journey. For some students, the middle school years can be challenging. Elementary school is placed with a larger school community. Social aspects have a different dimension and energy. Academic expectations take on different meaning. New interests emerge, and opportunities for choice build a sense of independence. In short, middle school is a place where students begin to test their wings and practice the skills that lift them into adulthood. At the center of this charge are our middle school students, youngsters whose bodies and minds are developing more rapidly than at any stage since infancy. These in-between years, just shy of childhood, but not fully teens, are when tweens begin to crave. They begin to crave independence and self-direction. Tweens make a lot of mistakes, and tweens learn from them, and still make more mistakes after that. For children at this stage to be successful, the adults have to embrace messiness that we sometimes call middle school. Yet those mistakes and the growth that follows each and every mistake are precisely what give middle school its meaning. Council Rock embraces the whole child as an individual in a middle school context. Our teachers, staff, and principals are well versed in the best educational practices for grades seven and eight students. They add social, emotional, and academic support where and whenever needed. In short, you will hear and see tonight that our middle school students are in very good hands. The remarkable growth that occurs in students between elementary and high school is a true metamorphosis. Over two years, the tentative testing of wings is replaced with full-blown flight as students take off for the challenges that await them in high school. I know you will enjoy tonight's presentation, particularly our student musicians, and want to thank you again for listening. And now I would like to introduce our Director of Secondary Education, Mr. Al Funk. Thank you, Dr. Sanko. Thank you for coming out this evening to learn a little bit more about our fantastic seventh and eighth grade middle school program. I easily have the best job of the evening in that I get to introduce our wildly talented middle school musicians. So we thought it very appropriate to kick off our program this evening by hearing from the talented musicians from both Holland Middle School and Newtown Middle School. It is a combined orchestra under the direction of Mrs. Lauren Rudat, and they will be performing tonight a selection titled Gauntlet. Please enjoy.
great job, gang. Thank you for coming out tonight. We appreciate your support in this night. Nicely done. Is that a round of applause? <laughs> Would also like to recognize Ms. Stratton, who joined us and helped us tonight with this. She's over at Newtown Middle School with us. Thank you. Sorry about that. My name is Tim Long, and I am the building principal at Newtown Middle School. Take a picture of that one for you. Tonight's presenters, um, we'll be going through one by one. You'll be meeting administration from both Holland and Newtown. This is Mr. Rich Hollihan, the principal of Holland Middle School. Uh, Mr. Tim Ketty, unfortunately he can't be here tonight, but he's the assistant principal at uh, New uh, Holland Middle School. I think you recognize that picture. That's me. Um, and we have Mr. Zachary Vile, the assistant principal at Newtown Middle School. So what we'd like to show you right now is a quick synopsis, four-minute video of the day in a life of our students. A video that was put together for your enjoyment. Enjoy. Another day at school. I can't wait to make Irish potatoes and FCS later today. I'm really tired. What are we doing today? Oh yeah, we're making our uh, clocks and tech ed. That should be fun. Good morning. Oh, the hallways are so packed. Hallways are surprisingly empty. Guess I got in a little bit late. I don't know. Oh, hey, Mr. Ornstein. I'm a good dad. I used to be so scared to open my locker. Now I can open them so easily. Anyway, what books do I need for uh... my first two classes today? And we are at homeroom. Surprisingly empty. Oh, hey, Jack. What's up? How you doing? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I love Mr. Weeks' class. He's my favorite teacher. I wonder what we're going to be learning today. It's new if we're reviewing something. What about class seven? Oh, wait, yep, never mind. That's the class. Oh, hey, everyone. Hmm, this books look interesting. Doable? I wonder what it's about. Okay, just don't cut off your finger. You need that. Right with it. Just keep the finger, okay? Looking good, looking good, looking good. And okay, finger is still intact. Good job. And I'm not gonna get my seat at lunch. I'm starving. I need to go find my table and get lunch. Hi everyone! Sorry, I was a little bit late. I was trying to get my lunch. And Jack with the hard boiled eggs. Smelling like hard boiled eggs. What should I get for lunch today? Meatball sub? Hmm, maybe not. Pizza? That looks really good. Maybe I should get a salad or a sandwich. I don't think I'd go with the pasta and veggie. I wonder where everyone is. Oh, that's where they are. Hi. <laughs> the hallways are empty. That's good. I hate when there's a lot of people. Finally, FCS, my favorite. We're making Irish potatoes. Roll them up, drop them in the cinnamon, and place them on the sheet. 
Should I use another one? No. I'll save them for later. Hi, Mrs. Purvis. I don't know what we're doing today. <sighs> I love gym class, but this is exhausting. Oh, hi, Mr. Erger. Oh, I hate these things. One, two. How are people so good with that? Three. Four. Finally, we're done. Oh, there's my bus. On time. I wonder what a typical day at Newtown is like. I wonder what a typical day at Holland looks like. So I, I promise that's exactly what both buildings look like every single day. The students are very well behaved. So we have four things to go over for you real quick. The structure, which you guys kind of saw a little bit about already, which I'll speak to. The philosophy, challenges, and goals. We'll get right into structure. Thank you. There we go. All right, so we have a teaming concept, and the, the general idea the general idea is to make large schools much smaller, right? So at Newtown, we have roughly 850 students, and at Holland, 950. And that's very overwhelming. If you're a student coming to a new school, you're a seventh grader, you're an eighth grader, the building's very big. We try to make it small. So there's a teaming concept. Uh, Newtown has six teams, Holland has seven teams, and essentially we take a big school and make it small, where there's roughly 140 students per team and what that does is allow students to build connections and build a community within that team. Uh, students have seven academic periods. We recently transitioned into a period eight at the end of the day, and what that looks like is students go to orchestra, band, uh, chorus, they still do their music. If students are not in music, they take that opportunity in time to have um, some opportunities to retake tests, work with their teachers, um, study, get their homework done, and the idea behind that is to unpack their day prior to leaving, so that way when they go home, we know they have other activities or they might be joining some of our activities here uh, in our buildings. Um, as a former athletic director, I can tell you the most important thing for middle school students, not only to build friendships and that community, is to get involved in our clubs and activities. Um, so I will tell you those come up very soon. So when your students are ready to go into the middle school, make sure they're ready and prepared. We have all different types of clubs. We create new clubs every single day. Um, our student council puts on a lot of great events. Obviously, we have our athletics, our band and choir and orchestra like you saw today. Um, again, the day is seven periods. There, are, there is health and PE, arts rotation. Kids will get through all the arts rotation. As you saw, FCS is one of those, and those Irish potatoes were delicious. 45-minute uh, periods, and there is no recess. So that's the, the toughest part of the transition, I believe, coming from elementary to middle school is there is no more recess. But that is the structure of the day. I've hit my two-minute slot, and we have philosophy next with Mr. Tim Young. So as Dr. Sanko alluded to, at a middle level, we have two short years with kids. They're literally transitioning in, and they're transitioning out the immediately the following the second year. And there's a lot to cover and to help, the, help your kids in that amount of time. What we try to do is, coming from middle uh, elementary school, is provide that soft landing. And you'll, you, if you're a parent of a sixth grader, you should be getting multiple emails regarding transition opportunities we have for your kids. All the schools will be visiting us in middle, late May. So each elementary school will come to the middle schools and they'll have the time, an hour and a half, to walk the building, meet with peers, some seventh graders, some eighth graders, they'll walk the building, they'll have the, have the opportunity to ans ask questions, get questions answered, talk about their fears, talk about what they're excited about, and get real information from kids who are living it on a daily basis. As Mr. Um, Vile said, they are teams. So when, a middle, when an elementary school is coming to a middle school, there are 150 kids roughly from each sending school. That is approximate size of our team. So taking a big school, making it feel small and comfortable for these kids is key. So we provide these opportunities to help them transition, 
I tell you that they are more ready for the transition to the middle level. I mean, if, when you see a sixth grader coming in in late May, you know they're ready to be in middle school. They're probably be more ready than the parents are at that time. What we're trying to do in the two short years is develop resiliency. It is key to help them learn to grow and to swing for themselves. I love baseball analogies. You can't always swing the bat for them. You gotta let them swing from themselves. You gotta let them even fail. So you can then take that failure, those, t those opportunities in which they didn't do as well as they wanted to and unpack the decisions that were made. How did you study? Where did you study? And help them determine what's a better route for them to take. Maybe it's a location in the house. Maybe it's technology that's around them. But you help unpack this, the decisions they made that didn't lead to the grade they were desiring, and you help them grow and develop the resiliency, helping them to be advocates for themselves. Go meet the teacher. Have conversation with the teacher. Ask for additional help. Again, we had the period eight now at the end of the day, which is a really, really good opportunity for kids to have that second chance learning, to get the understanding they need so when they go home, they're not sitting there and tapping you on the shoulder and saying, how should I do this algebra one problem or how should I do this science lab that I'm supposed to have completed because they have the opportunity now at the end of the day. We want to launch them from adolescence into young adulthood. Again, two very short years. But in those two short years, your kids will grow anywhere from 12 to 15 inches. It's absolutely amazing. I always tease that if a child comes in, they're usually my height. I'm not that tall. They're my height, but they're shooting way beyond me by the time they're leaving. They're ready to go. And it's, it happens quickly. But we want them to have the resiliency. We want them to have the tool bag ready to be advocates and get the support. Because once they get to the high school, they're all over the building. The teaming concept is not there. They're going to need to know and understand how to get and um, ask for the help they need. And I want to leave you with this thought. There it is. So when I was traveling out west with my son, we were doing college visits. We're in um, South Dakota. Speed limit out there is 80 miles an hour. The hidden secret out there is the minimum speed is 40. But what does that mean? Why am I even bringing this up? All kids aren't going to reach 80. That is a 1976 Chevy Vega. That is a car I drove in high school. I don't think that thing was going to get anywhere near 80 miles an hour. This vehicle is a vehicle Mr. Hollihan, a little better than me, drove in, when he was in high school. Mr. Hollihan, what kind of car is that? 1965 Pontiac Catalina. I'd venture a guess that that car could probably reach closer to 80 than my car. How does this connect? Our job at the middle school is to find the right speed for your child. What we don't want to do is create undue stress with the wheels start coming off. We want to program them for success. Ultimately, that is our goal, and we want the kids to actualize their success and understand where they need to be within this, this parameters of speed. So remember, you may see 80 miles an hour. That may be the top of the top classes that we have to offer, but we, you gotta know your child, know their expectation you have for them, know the activities they're involved with, and we program them for the speed in which works for them, that they're, they're challenged, but they're not stressed. And that is key. Mr. Hollihan? That 1965 Pontiac Catalina could go 80 miles an hour, but you'd have a heck of a time stopping it. You could also probably play an entire ice hockey game in the size of the vehicle if that wasn't the case. And I, I, would, uh, I would give much to have that back. Um, as you can imagine, middle school also comes with its challenges. You see some listed there, and I'll explain them uh, in a little bit of detail. They're not limited to Council Rock. They're not necessarily even limited to middle school. But some of the challenges that we faced are same challenges that you're facing with your children as they enter the middle school years. And so as we think about things uh, like social media and the, and the access that students have to information, as well as um, other options that they can access on their technology, which is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, 
it becomes a challenge here at school to try to break them of some of those habits that they've developed over time to sit in an academic setting. So our rule at school is that your phone is off and away throughout the day. Uh, we had a, a meeting with our middle schoolers last month and I said, okay, raise your hand if when you first came to school you were using the little phone holder that's in the classroom when your teacher told you as you enter the room you were to put it in the phone holder. By and large, every hand went up. And then I said, now I'd like you to be honest with me. Two-thirds of the way through the school year, how many people are still practicing that every day in class? Honestly, there was less than half that were continuing to do that. And so part of the challenge that we have is trying to get them to acclimate to each other and not to a device at a very specific time during the day when we can have their attention, not just for academics, but for socialization reasons. The world around them is a lot faster than what you, and at least I, I, I should probably tell you how old I am, 39. But I've been working in a middle school for over 20 years, and so this is how you look when you work with 900 middle schoolers in 20 years. But their world is a lot different than ours, and, they, and what they watch and what they're exposed to, what entertains them, and what they think is recognition is completely different than what we were used to in our middle school years. And so that presents an additional challenge. Um, I can remember maybe two years ago, there was a TikTok challenge going around where students were encouraged to vandalize the restroom. And I remember seeing on a, one of the cameras a young man walking down the hallway with a soap dispenser in his book bag or his backpack. And as we pulled the young man in and said, okay, <laughs> this is probably not the most wise decision to make while you're in middle school today, didn't seem to be too overly concerned at the fact that he was walking around with a soap dispenser in his backpack because the information that they're often inundated with on social media platforms is th this is acceptable and it is uh, almost a challenge for them. And so recognition for them doesn't always come in the form of academic achievement or athletic achievement or even in the band of course, but it comes from influences that happen outside of school and yet here we are trying to deal with those things. And so it's a learning curve for us as well. There is a, a one specific area that I've been intrigued with over time and that is this idea of a generational gap. Um, as the further we move away from the generation of the students that enter the school, the more disconnected we become from things like social media and other effects that this that generational gap has had on students. That includes their needs. Are their educational needs the same as they were when we went to school and how do we adapt to that? What are going to be the needs of their future and what do they need to be successful as they move on? Mr. Long alluded to the idea of adolescence and us trying to war a little bit against adolescence. We want them to move to young adulthood and sometimes that's difficult to do with the influences that they have around them, but that is one of our challenges and one of our goals and one of our passions. I know that you don't, I know that you love your middle schooler. I also know that you probably don't want them living in your basement until they're 40. And so as we try to move them to this idea of young adulthood, we try to increase their responsibility and the expectations and doing so knowing that these other influences are challenging them as they enter into the schools and become part of our community. Our main job is to love your child. That's our number one goal. And we make no bones about that. It's one of the four letter words that I feel very comfortable using in middle school, that we will love on your child. We will also provide them the academic opportunities and all the co-curricular opportunities, but we need to love them first. And so as they enter into our building, that is what they are surrounded with and that is our pledge to them. And in doing so, we feel as though that helps us to help them move towards young adulthood. And as we partner with you, that will give them a better chance of success. Mr. Long mentioned that the difficult transition for you as a parent is middle school. Moms and dads are usually the ones that struggle with the transition. The students are ready. Once they reach sixth grade, they're done with elementary school, they're ready to move to middle school, and when they enter this building, it takes no more than two weeks for them to become acclimated to a brand new schedule, a whole new set of faces, a locker, different teachers for every subject, and roaming around the building without having to hold hands or be led by the teacher. That happens quickly. And so as they enter in here, we know that their big transition is going to be in two years. 
because at the end of eighth grade they're going to move up to the high school and so our job and our goal was to prepare them for that option to pass them along nicely to the high schools to allow them to finish their k-12 to education at council rock south or north or wherever they decide to spend their high school years the last thing that i've listed there is the word seen and i'd like to use that to sort of wrap up this generational gap idea for you and so we know that the world of your child is filled with those things on the left. And there's the acronym S-C-E-N-E. They're filled with speed. When I was a kid, Happy Days was the show to watch. And if you wanted to watch the next episode, you waited till the next Thursday night. Children don't need to do that anymore. Their world is full of, of convenience. I've actually had students um, door dash food to the front door of the school. Uh, because it's convenient, and that's what they've grown up with. It's not their fault. It's just part of their world. Their world is full of entertainment. Given free time and any option, my 19-year-old son will watch YouTube videos of diesel pickup trucks because it's entertaining to him, and he can use his phone right there to access that as much as he'd like. It's full of nurture. I think it started with... Uh, you know, moms and dads moving to the playgrounds with their child instead of that independent time with them and sort of overseeing their activities and making play dates. So they've been nurtured quite a bit. And finally, it's entitlement. They think they're entitled to what they want when they want it. They're the most important person in the world. The world revolves around them. And again, it's not their fault. The downside of that is what you see on the right-hand side. And what they learn from those things is that slow is bad. Because their world's full of convenience, hard is bad. Because it's full of entertainment, boring is bad. Because of their nurtured environment, risk is bad. And because of the entitlement, labor is bad. We all know that the list on the right-hand side is a fact of life. And so as we look at life through the lens of a generation of these middle school students, it's our job to try to make an environment that helps them understand that life is full of bad it's full of slow, it's full of hard, it's full of boring, it's full of risk, and it's full of labor. And so as we look at how we educate your children through the middle school lens, that's one of our primary goals. And uh, our secondary goal is to partner with you in that process. And so it is our pleasure to work with your kids. We love them. And it's job security. So thank you for your, for sending your, ch your children to us. We, we think of no greater work, and no greater passion. And uh, so we'll just keep plugging along and partner with you and uh, move them into that young adulthood as they should. So ultimately our goal is success, success for your kids. And this image is here for a reason. Success doesn't come without its obstacles. Well, that is road stops, turns, twists, delays. But ultimately, teaching them the skills in the short time that we have is going to benefit them in the long run. So when there is a roadblock, a, a change in the road, unpack decisions with your kids. Don't try to help make, you know, you can assist them with the decision making, but allow them to learn from what is in front of them so they can clear their own path. And that when they do go off as adults, whether college, military, or even a workforce, they're prepared for whatever is in front of them, and they can navigate and manage any and all of that. That is the middle school in a nutshell. Two short years, a lot of work, a lot of enjoyable work. The growth of your kids is absolutely tremendous, and we do appreciate every moment we have with them, but it is very fast for us. Um, at this time, we do have one more uh, treat for you. We have a joint group from both Holland and Newtown again. This is a jazz band um, under the direction of Mr. Rudat. And Mr. Rudat, and I didn't get the uh, name of the song you're playing.
I agree with I. I agree with Mr. Long. Let's give our student musicians another round of applause. Thank you, for, thank you for giving your time and sharing your talents with us tonight. Thank you to Mr. Slutter, and Mr. Rudat, and Mrs. Rudat as well for being here tonight. And of course, thank you to our cabinet team, the middle school principals and board members who are here joining us tonight. Our middle school principals are veteran school leaders who capture the care and compassion of their school, school teams and demonstrate on a daily basis, their commitment to keeping our students first always. A bravo and a thank you once again to both Holland and Newtown Middle School Joint Orchestra and Jazz Band. Thank you for sharing your talents and hard work with us tonight. I'd like to thank the community members who are here and watching uh, from home and celebrating young musicians with us tonight and celebrating all of our middle school students. Remember, middle school is more than just a building that bridges elementary and high school. It's a time of tremendous growth and opportunity when students begin to see themselves as part of a greater community. One important takeaway tonight is that our middle school teams are available to provide the resources and supports to students and families that, that are needed during these years. And most important, the Council Rock team stands by each student and fully realizes the potential as each student is an individual. I'd like to offer a gentle reminder that on Wednesday, May 17th at Newtown Middle School, we will have our high school principals forum. The high school principals forum will be our final forum of this school year and our special guest speaker will be Dr. Felicia Ganther, president of the Bucks County Community College. Once again, uh, congratulations on a job well done to our young student musicians tonight. Thank you for being here. Have a great night and we'll see you in the hallways tomorrow. <laughs>